Quiet, quiet on set, let's go. All right, Black Tree TV, once again, we're at ABFF, and we've been talking to some great directors, and this is one of my favorite, favorite directors, uh, Mr. John Singleton. So, how, uh, you how you doing, brother? You good, good. So we was, we was we've been talking a lot about what has ABFF meant to all these future directors and everything else, but you started in Boys in the Hood 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Probably meant a lot to the creation of ABFF. Mm -hmm. Have you ever just thought about your place in the game and bringing the actors and everything else and what you've meant for films in general? Is that, is that kind of hard for you to digest? No, I just, I don't think about any of that. I just think about just trying to keep on doing what I do. You know, there's, obviously it's been working, you know, so I just think about try to, you know, stay true to myself and uh, and uh, my soul and make good work as a filmmaker. Now, when you make such a great film coming out, you know, I mean, you Academy Award nominated youngest director to to get that honor. Uh, how was it? Was it like really like a challenge to to go with film number two and number three? I mean, did you feel like? That was like a. I don't, I don't look at it like that. I look at it like that movie gave me a career. It got my, my foot in the door, and it's up to me to to keep a whole level of quality in what I do to maintain that. You know, it's just like not just sitting up on more. You know, when we are it is twenty years of Boys in the Hood, but I got a dozen other movies that you could talk about that I've done. You know, that are good film, films as well. Right. You know, so it's all for me. It's about a level of quality and. That's what I try to impart to young filmmakers that you just don't jump out and just do something like half ass. You try to do the best work you can no matter what no matter what the story is. Right, right. And uh Black Film did a piece on you uh recently where it talked about twenty years ago Boys in the Hood, ten years ago Baby Boy, mm -hmm. and now now this year you got abduction. Mm -hmm. How how have you grown as a filmmaker and like how is these different films because this is a different genre for you a little bit, right? It is, it is. You know, it's an action picture, but I've done other action yeah, pictures. Yeah. You know, my, my attitude is, like, the best advice that was given to me was try to do it all, you know. Um, I'm not one of these people that runs and try to do something different at the expense of what got me into the game and what people, you know, like like me to do, you know what I'm saying? So it's like I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back and do, you know, do my hood movies, you know. Right. I can do big big, you know, big commercial action pictures and everything and stuff with, you know, various casts and stuff. But I, w I really want to go back and do, get to the heart and the soul of things. You know, eventually with the Academy Award nominations and all of that stuff, I realized that we had really tapped into the social consciousness. And it was a statement film. Boys in the Hood is the original. Nobody was doing movies like this about Los Angeles, how we grew up. Colors is one thing. This ain't it. You know what I mean? This is a movie that's not telling you how bad it is to be a fucking cop. This is telling you how bad it is to be in the hood. You know what I'm saying? And, and to be innocent and try to survive. The movie for me was a, kind of like a, a rap album on film. Just like the rappers were speaking out on in music, that's what I wanted to do. And my attitude was, you know, if only black people go see this movie, then it's gonna be a huge hit and fine. But if anybody is cool enough and understands what we're trying to do here, then fine too. I don't think I really stopped to ever even think about it. It's now that I realize because it's not like this was a story that I had no personal connection to. So for me, it was just, you know, playing my life in front of the world. Put it like this. I didn't realize that the world had no idea what goes on in South Central LA. The movie really captured the zygus of what was going on in that time. Okay. And I, I want to take it back 20 years, because I, I just watched the, your program downstairs, and they talked about you at cons, and we are open up Boys in the Hood, and you didn't, you know, you might not expect it, the crowd reaction to be what it was. But um, how, how was that feeling for you, like, just to know that you worldwide was, was being appreciated for the work that you poured in? It was great. It was, it was uh, at the time, very intimidating, but... I didn't like allow myself to just get all like 
up in the air and everything and just, you know, thinking my shit don't stink or nothing like that. I'm just like, excuse me, I don't know. But I, I just, I said, I'm, I took it with a grain of salt and I just said, okay, I got to jump into my next thing. You know, when, when, when Boys in the Hood was coming out, I was already courting Janet Jackson to be in Poetic Justice. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, just keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Um, Cause I, did, I my worst fear of anything, and I'm not fear, fear for anything, was I didn't want to be a flash in the pan. I didn't want to put all my energy and just do this one movie and then, you know, go back to living in the hood. Like, okay, I used to do that. You know, yeah. I, I wasn't going to be like that. I was going to be like, I'm going to have a career doing this and I'm going to do it the way nobody has ever done it before. And I think that that's what I've maintained. <laughs> Follow us. Follow us. Follow us. Follow us. Follow us.